me switch gears. I want to talk about the hush money case. Look, yeah, I've said many times, I think that the Manhattan DA shouldn't have filed this case. I think it's a misdemeanor souped up to look like a felony. I think it too long, took too long to bring the case. I think the DA Bragg brought it after you know, getting slammed for not filing the criminal fraud charges against Trump. And I think, by the way, that no matter what the outcome, it's going to help Trump politically. But with all that said, at the least on the misdemeanor of filing the false records, meaning pretending that the payments to Stormy Daniels were legal expenses, it sure seems like they have a pretty strong technical legal case against him, no? The statute of limitations has expired on the misdemeanor. But, so but that's no. a legal issue that's already been, you know, he, he can argue that. You can't argue that in front of the jury. But the, Dan, the only reason, as you know, that he was allowed to revive a dead misdemeanor, dead because of the statute of limitations, by saying it was a misdemeanor to cover up an underlying felony, which was this election money um, campaign donation that he was trying to cover up. That's the only thing that reinvigorated this dead charge. And that's a BS charge, too. It's all tied together. So I don't think there's any legal merit to any piece of this, not one piece. But you're talking about why the case shouldn't have been brought, right? I mean, you're saying that as a result, this case... You bring a case, case that's barred by the statute of limitations. Okay. But, but you've lost that argument already, right? That argument's been litigated and lost. And so now there's a trial. The case is happening. And my point is, now that the case is happening, right, even though I am one of the people who has publicly said, I don't think he should have filed these charges... After Now that the case has been filed, at least on the misdemeanor, it seems to me that they've, you know, it's going to be a tough defense. Oh, he's getting convicted. I don't really think there's a lot of mystery about that. He shouldn't, but he's going to get convicted. The jury's going to hate him. Manhattan went 92 percent, between 87 and 92 percent for Joe Biden. That's where this is going to be tried. These are not Trump lovers, and even the Trump survey that he attached to his most recent motion uh, showed that 61 percent of the jury pool that they surveyed but already they thinks he's guilty. But could be just following the evidence. I mean, it doesn't have to be. I mean, again, again, putting aside whether they should have been prosecuted, whether you're biased or not biased, and they're going to try and root that stuff out, the facts in the case. I mean, for example, you don't actually believe Trump didn't have an affair with Stormy Daniels, as he says, I right? I do not believe. I, right. No, I believe there was a there was right. an interlude. I don't know if affair may be too Whatever. strong. Whatever, yes. All right, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough in terms of the language. But some, you know, the sex happened uh, between yeah. them. Um, and, yeah. and, you know, and that's going to be a tricky part of his defense, right? His defense is going to still be, it didn't happen, but I wanted to make this go away to protect my family, et cetera. I mean, putting aside whether the jury's in Manhattan or the jury's somewhere else, it's a tough technical case for him. Uh, look, I think the jury's going to believe that he paid off a porn star before the election to make her go away and that he didn't write down in his books hush money <laughs> to Stormy right. Daniels because no one in the history of hush money payments has ever written that in any book anywhere. It defeats the whole purpose of a hush money payment. But Those. the thing I can't get past now, so I, I grant you, yeah, they're probably going to convict him. They're going to convict him pretty easily, I think. Um, but the thing I can't get past that everybody skips by in this whole thing is I had this, a former campaign election guy on my phone, uh, on my show, who was really learned in all of this. And he said, the only way that you can prove it's an actual campaign donation, you know, in, in order to help your campaign, which is what they're alleging in this, mm -hmm. is if the money would never under any circumstances have ever been paid for anything other than to support one's campaign. Mm -hmm. So a hush money payment to a woman saying, I'm going to go public with our affair would not qualify because there have been lots of men, rich and yep. powerful in particular, who have paid that money time and time again. Yep. So unless you could prove that the only reason he would have done it was to help that his 16 campaign, you fail that test, and that's what's going to happen here. That's for the felony. Yes, that's on for appeal. the felony. Yeah, and, and look, and on that one, I agree. I, I don't think it's going to be easy. That's why I kept focusing on the misdemeanor, because it's, <laughs> it's the tougher question. And what do you make of, of his, the, Trump's attacks on the judge's daughter? You think those are bad, right? No, I'm fine with that. Really? Really? Yeah. You're yeah. fine with him I, putting out pictures of the judge's daughter and attacking the judge's daughter, so that's now fair game? Yeah, I am. Um, I don't... I don't think it's true he's threatened her, uh, not, not least at the time yeah, when he hasn't yeah. threatened yeah. her. But that's what they're saying. That's why they're, it, his critics are saying he needs to be gagged because he's threatened her. 
If he had threatened her, we might be in a different territory, but he hasn't. He's just criticized her. She's a Democratic political operative. Her whole business is getting $10 million from Adam Schiff and the like, who's running on the promise of getting Trump and getting him convicted in these cases. She actually so, does, by that logic, stand to gain if Trump gets convicted. That's why this judge should have disqualified himself, recused himself in the beginning, and what created his conflict in ruling on the gag order with respect to his daughter. He, he shouldn't have decided either one. And a, an impartial judge, I don't think, would have gagged Trump on the daughter. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.